Ken Trahan with an old friend, Tommy Bowden. And it's great to see you here, Tommy. I guess, in a manner of speaking, welcome home, right? Well, glad to be back. This was my first uh, head coaching job at, at Tulane, but uh, uh, just a, a great experience back in 1997, 1998. Yep, remember it very well. And, of course, you accomplished something here that hadn't been done, you know, going 7-4 and four and then 12-0 and 0 and ranked 7th in the country. And, and I'm sure you still reflect on that. I know you've been back to visit with some of the former players, and I'm sure that's still special to you these years later. Yeah, you know, I haven't been able to get back as much as I wanted. I've, I did TV after I got through coaching for about the last eight or nine years, and you're always active on uh, Saturday. So I uh, haven't been able to get back and see a game since I've actually left. When you look at Tulane today, you see that they've had two consecutive winning seasons and, and won two bowl games in a row. Did you envision that that was possible? I mean, you, I knew you thought they could do some things, but you obviously felt stronger about moving up to a Power 5 conference. Yeah, you know, when I took this job, I, I thought there were so many ingredients that they had. They had a, you know, it, uh, New Orleans is a great football city. You know, they love sports here. You got the Saints, LSU close by, you got Tulane and, and other things, but they, they really like sports and it's an international and national city. I thought the social life for student athletes would be one that could attract them. Great education, uh, recruiting base, gosh, of Panhandle, you got State of Louisiana, you got Mississippi. Uh, I just thought East Texas, just there's too many ingredients here for them not to be successful. And the, then I inherited some great players and Buddy Tevens had left and so uh, I really hit it a good time. You didn't have a real difficult decision leaving because Clemson's a Power Five conference team, and yet I'm sure it was difficult leaving. Your children were happy in school, and you guys liked the community, so it wasn't that easy, right? Oh, no, it was really difficult. Like I said, uh, people here treated me really good. Sandy Barber was the athletic director at that time who, who really tried to give me everything we needed to be successful, and my children, both I went to John Curtis, had a great experience, and like I said, at that particular time, the Saints weren't winning, and neither was LSU was not winning, so Tulane going undefeated it was a tough decision to leave they, they told me I could be a, one of them grand marshals on one of them floats so <laughs> I, I missed that opportunity maybe somebody will offer that again I'm sure you pay attention to them now and I I'm sure you admire what Willie Fritz is doing there now yeah, you know, I follow him, and he has really been uh, cordial to me as making invitations to come back. I've just been really busy, but uh, came back a couple of years ago. I think uh, there was some award, uh, but uh, he has treated me really good. When they hired him, I thought he would be the right guy, and he is the right guy. I hope they can keep him because uh, I think he'll continue to have success, more success, which is going to make him, unfortunately, an attractable candidate for somewhere else. But uh, I hope he stays because I think he's what they need, and he's, he's, he's the right guy at the right time. Well, you obviously envision Clemson being able to be a, a power on a national stage, which is why you took the job, to see where that program is now. Does that surprise you at all? Well, no. Originally, when I went there, they had uh, won a national championship in 1981. And usually, if you go to a school that's won a national championship, there's the opportunity and capability to win another one. So uh, there was some work that we had to do from facilities and upgrade that and upgrade the talent level when we got there. But we worked hard on getting that done and then uh, hired a young guy named Dabo Sweeney who's taking it to another level. Yeah, obviously he's done a great job there. What is it that, more than anything else, that's enabled him to put that program over the top? Well, I, he's got several intangibles needed. But if I had to pick one, say you can only pick one thing that he does well, he's a really good recruiter. And uh, the team with the best players usually wins. And when I made the decision to hire him. I interviewed another guy that played for me at Alabama. It's a very talented coach. Dabo had a little more impressive uh, resume from a recruiting standpoint. And that was the, 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 the kind of the straw that, uh, that broke the crown on the back as far as hiring him. But uh, he had other things. But recruiting would have been his number one asset. 29 straight wins. That doesn't happen by osmosis. Obviously, it's a heck of a program. You look at their team right now, and you see them playing LSU in this game. I'm sure you've paid attention to LSU to a degree as well. How do you see that matchup? You know, uh, two great quarterbacks. I, there's some individual things from a coaching perspective mm -hmm. I'm really uh, excited about seeing. Number one would be the, the young uh, gunslinger, Joe Brady, offensive co play caller, along with Emsfinger. But the guy that's heavily involved in that passing game versus Brent Venables. you got an experienced old guy that really knows how to dissect a, an offense. A de uh, and then you got Joe Brady, young gunslinger. you got the Heisman Trophy winner, Joe Burrow. No, probably, had, probably had his name in the hunt. Trevor Lawrence, the preseason favorite didn't get invited to New Orleans, so he'll have a chip on his shoulder. Travis Etienne, one of the top running backs in the country, maybe the most productive running back in the country, really not recruited actively by LSU. So there are some individual things I think that are really interested as you watch this game. It should be a great game. I think a lot of big plays in it. You know, the partisanship, and obviously that building's probably going to be 70-30 or something like that, if not more, right? 
Yeah, unfortunately, neither one, none of those 73 or 1,000 fans and uh, uh, maybe 50,000 LSU fans are, is going to be allowed to step on the field <laughs> and cross that white line. If they could cross that white line, it'd make a difference. But uh, both of them are used to loud arenas and playing with loud crowd noise. I don't think it'll affect either one. But again, uh, it, there are at times where you need a little extra incentive. It's going to be two highly competitive teams, talented teams. A little extra noise might be the extra push that the LSU might need. Uh, last thing, I'll never forget sitting at lunch with you on you know, St. Charles Avenue and, and you were telling Ed Daniels and I, all right, I give you five to seven schools that, in the country that you might go to. And, of course, Clemson was one of the ones that was mentioned, and clearly that was an obvious. LSU would certainly be one of those. Alabama, where you were, is one of those. Uh, these are two of the best jobs that you can find in the United States, Clemson and LSU. Well, they really are. I think a lot of it's got to do with location. Uh, LSU was on that. It was Alabama, LSU, uh, it was Alabama, Auburn, LSU, Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, Clemson. The reason for a Clemson, the reason for LSU was the fact that uh, this is a great football state, Louisiana is, and you are kind of the state school. You don't really have to fight anybody in state. You can go over to East Texas, you can head over to Mississippi, go north to Arkansas, and head into Alabama, Panhandle, Florida, and get better players, but it's a great state. Clemson's very similar. Uh, you know, uh, uh, South Carolina's a good state, not as populated as what LSU, but uh, close to Georgia, close to North Carolina, uh, close to good football players that had good tradition and history. So uh, in North Carolina, where Mac Brown is, he used to be the head coach at Tulane, was obviously has another good football state there, kind of the kind of the, 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 the granddaddy school in that state. So several good reasons for LSU's a good job, but uh, the availability of good players is one of them. Great to have you back. Uh, what's the old saying? A one, a two, a hell of a hullabaloo, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how to spell those words. I, I heard them a lot. Though. Tommy, thank you. Thank you.